Hey, Van Pope here. Hope you've been well. We're back with the second episode of Nine Countries in Nine Days. On this episode, Danielle and I continue on our road trip across Europe in my Land Cruiser 120. From Sweden to Portugal. It's day two. Join us as we make our way through Denmark into Germany. Well, I'm joined here by this little guy. A very good morning. Just woke up here in a uh, yeah, little outside of Copenhagen. Finished the first leg of our trip yesterday. As you could tell, it all went really well on the, on the ferry. It's really nice to have friends uh, here along the journey to be able to uh, meet them again and stay with them. Today we're going to drive down to uh, Germany. I wish I could take this little guy with me. I think it's about eight hours that we plan to do today, hopefully a little less. But you know, it's Germany, so usually there's tons of roadworks. And if you've been driving on the Autobahn in Germany, you know that uh, there's usually not a lot going on during those roadworks. From three lanes to one lane, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so we're going to go uh, all the way down to Kassel. And uh, the Land Cruiser has been doing really well so far. Uh, it was crazy rain yesterday and uh, hopefully today it seems to be dry at least here but you know we're covering a lot of a lot of ground so uh, the weather will probably change quite a bit let's get started hope you enjoy the ride okay it's recording now so am i recording myself or you oh yeah <laughs> guys are leaving yep Coming germany well. Back on the road. Danes and their bridges. We're driving via Odense, across the Great Belt Bridge, or as the Danes say, it's 18 kilometers long and links together the eastern and western parts of Denmark. trip update here on uh, day two we are about uh, I think five to ten minutes away from the German border and uh, since this is recorded at the end of September COVID-19 is an issue uh, 
we have our uh, our masks here in the in the center console with us, and uh, we wear them in public spaces. Uh, gloves at the gas stations, that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, so we try to be careful. But you never know when it comes to the border crossing. You know, things change a lot. Yeah, we actually don't know if during this trip we will have any issues crossing borders. We've been trying to do our research, of course. There's this website, Reopen Europe. I think it's a website from the European Union, which keeps track of all the latest uh, changes. It's kind of crazy. European Union, known for the Schengen Agreement, you know, free movement of goods, of people, now uh, has these restrictions. I think we're gonna be fine. Crossing into Denmark was totally fine. Uh, maybe we will face the Deutsche Polizei uh, who want to see our papers. I don't know. Uh, we are in transit and uh, we checked this morning. If you're in transit uh, it's fine. So for tourism you can, uh, you can cross the border into Germany. So yeah let's see. Fingers crossed. We're in Germany. That was very, very smooth. Strangely enough, there was nothing at the border. It was just, we had to slow down to 70 kilometers per hour. Uh, there was no checkpoint, no nothing. So yeah, same old, same old basically, at least uh, when you go into Germany. However, on the other side, there's the, the Danish border guards stopping people. Uh, and a big tent, I think a big corona testing tent. I don't recommend taking the main highway back into Denmark coming from Germany. So we were discussing maybe uh, is it a possibility to uh, take the ferry. Uh, there's even a ferry from Germany directly to Sweden. So we just uh, completely bypass Denmark. That would take a full day, uh, so it's quite, quite a trip. It's a long, long ferry ride, but might be, might be worth it. That queue looked uh, about. It didn't move much. It looked like I don't know, half an hour long, one hour long, at least. Yeah. So uh, pretty crazy. I'm not sure what the best option is when we go back, but I guess we'll have to figure it out. And you guys will learn on an upcoming episode during which we will drive back up. Sweden. I'm glad and happy that we're uh, in Germany and uh, it's lunchtime. I'm gonna find a place to stop for a bite. See you in a bit. interesting note about uh, driving in Germany of course it's the Autobahn and as you probably know there are no speed restrictions no speed limitations on a large part of the Autobahn people have different notions of what the road law is here in Germany it differs a lot to where you are on the highway but generally speaking uh, there are not a lot of speed limitations so it's basically uh, a free-for-all and uh, I kind of really, really like it. It's such a unique highway uh, driving culture. And of course, a lot of German cars are really made for these high speeds. Uh, we're in the Land Cruiser, definitely not made for high speeds. But, uh, you know, we have the V6 4 liter. So it's very thirsty, especially at high, uh, high speeds doesn't really make sense to uh, to drive at high speeds with the Land Cruiser. That being said though, it's handling pretty well on the highway. Uh, has a lot of mass, it's a heavy car of course. I'm actually really looking forward to seeing all the different cars uh, here on the German Autobahn speeding past us. Because it's always kind of a, a feast for the eyes. 
you'll see the, the Beamers, you'll see the Benzes and uh, of course a lot of Porsches, uh, a lot of Audis, VW. Woo! Man, it's quite a drive. We're uh, about 200 kilometers away from Kessel. Hope you guys can hear me all right. It's very, very noisy. We're uh, at a rest stop, a highway stop, very, very close to the, to the highway. It's been going quite well so far. We're, uh, we're making, covering a lot of ground. And uh, yeah, my back is just getting a bit sore. And uh, it's good to take a short break, switch. There's a lot of crazy, crazy cars, you know, just passing by at super high speeds. So that's the only thing that's a little bit like uh, getting used to. There's none of that in Sweden. But I mean, that's the charm of the, of the German Autobahn. We have another 250 to go. We'll be staying at a hotel uh, which has uh, underground parking, hopefully, so we can uh, we can park our uh, Land Cruiser in a safe spot. You know, it's filled with a lot of gear. All right, so uh, I think we're gonna go there now in one stretch, in one go. I'm still getting used to a little bit to the to the whole vlogging thing. There's a lot of people looking at you like, who's that guy? And why is he shaking around? Or why is he waving around this black thingy on a stick contraption? Let's see what else we uh, meet on the on the autobahn. Let's go. The German newsreader is talking about the coronavirus and the rain never seems to stop. The landscape is slowly changing, getting more and more hilly the further south we go. We're approaching Kassel. I'm happy to finally leave the highway and go on a search for our hotel. Safe and Sound in Kessel, Germany. We're uh, currently staying at a uh, Art Nouveau hotel. It's pretty nice. We didn't really see much of Kessel because uh, we went to a restaurant, Italian restaurant, and then uh, yeah, we uh, 
we didn't see much of the city it's dark rainy so we just you know went there as quickly as possible the car is actually nicely parked in uh, in a garage the hotel has uh, has its own uh, private garage so um, that's nice because of all the stuff that's in there uh, we're I think the only uh, international guest at this hotel of course we have our uh, face masks and there's uh, a lot of corona pandemic procedures here for uh, like using new pens and then when you've used a pen to sign in you put it in a dif different basket there's hand sanitizer everywhere you can only use the elevator with like one person or one couple at a time it feels fairly okay it feels fine i think uh, they were happy that we we were here as uh, visitors as guests I don't think they actually get a lot of uh, international visitors these days. The hotel seemed pretty empty. So I just looked at the map and we are about uh, 1400 kilometers into our journey. It's a pretty good distance to have covered in two days, I would say. The um, next uh, destination is going to be Switzerland, uh, Interlaken. Really looking forward to the rest of the, of the trip because uh, it's been a while since I've been to Switzerland. It's the most dramatic scenery and uh, yeah, I really look forward to taking a Land Cruiser through through the Alps, across the Alps. Uh, the fun is really uh, beginning now, so if you're still sticking around, thanks. And I uh, hope you're enjoying the ride so far. Uh, it's been pretty smooth. I think it's time for us to uh, go to bed and uh, I'll see you at breakfast tomorrow. See you then.